Hello, today I'm looking at M5 June 2011 question 8. This question is testing me on moment of inertia and the rotation of a rigid body about a fixed smooth axis. So first things first, let's start off with part A. So I have a pendulum which consists of a uniform rod PQ of mass 3m. So I'm just going to draw this any old how. PQ 2a long, which is rigidly fixed at its end q to the center of a uniform circular disc of radius a. Oh, that's quite big. The rod is perpendicular to the plane of the disc. Ah, so the rod is here and the disc is going to be here. So this is the disc and its radius is a. The pendulum is free to rotate about a fixed smooth horizontal axis L which passes through the NP. So that is the axis L and is perpendicular to the rod. Show that the moment of inertia of the pendulum about L is this. Okay, so the way that we do the moment of inertia about this axis L is we do the momentum, sorry, the moment of inertia of the rod plus the moment of inertia of the disc but the disc is a bit a little bit fiddly because we have a formula for a disc about an axis which goes here we can work out the axis which goes here and then move it this distance so i think that's what we are going to have to do so um right so using the perpendicular axis theorem the eye of the disc um, axis along diameter times 2 makes the eye of a disc um, through center um, which is perpendicular to the plane of the disc. So basically here we have 2 of i diameter equals a half times the mass of the disc which is m times by the radius which is a squared so that I end up with i along the diameter is a quarter m a squared so now at least the dia uh, the uh, axis about which this is the moment of inertia is here so now i need to move that axis using the parallel axis theorem this distance so parallel axis theorem then says that i of the disc about L is going to be this plus the mass of the disc which is still M multiplied by the distance through which we're moving the axis squared so here I end up with uh, 4MA squared plus a quarter MA squared so I end up with 1617MA squared over 4 Okay, then, as well as that, I need to take into account the moment of inertia of the rod. So, I of the rod about this axis L, and that we can do just straight away, and that will be uh, 4 thirds times the mass of the rod, which is 3m, times by half of the length of the rod, which is a squared and so here I end up with 4ma squared so finally the moment of inertia of the whole pendulum about L is those two things added up so I've got 17ma squared over 4 plus uh, that's going to be 16ma squared over 4 which makes uh, 16 and 16 with 32, so 33 ma squared over 4. 
is that what they said? Phew, yes it is. So that part of the question is worth five marks. Okay, so in part B, it says that the pendulum is released in the position where PQ now makes an angle of alpha with the downward vertical. And at time t, PQ makes an angle of theta with the downward vertical, which will presumably be less. OK, show that the angle of speed theta dot of the pendulum satisfies this equation. OK, so this equation uh, looks like energy to me. Um, so let's have it be, and we can get theta dot into our energy equation from the kinetic energy, which will be half i omega squared or half i theta dot squared. So let's first of all begin by drawing a little diagram of what this will look like. So we have the rod, the axis was here at P, and let's make Q here. So initially, P0, Q0, that's where it began. Uh, sorry, uh, that's the downward vertical. So it began actually here. So sorry, let's look all. That's just the downward vertical. So it began here. So this is Q0, and this angle is alpha. And then later on, it's in this other position here. Let's call this Q1. Uh, and this time, PQ makes an angle of theta with the downward vertical. OK, the important points that we're interested in are where the center of mass of the rod is. So this is a length A away from the axis and we have this weight of the rod which was 3m so I've got 3mg in each of these two positions then the other important thing is where is the mass of the disc and that's at the end so here I've got mg mg Okay, so I'm going to say that the potential energy that it had in the first position, so potential energy at P naught Q naught, is going to equal the potential energy at P1 Q1 plus the kinetic energy at P1 Q1. So the potential energy that it has here uh let's say so basically we want the difference between here and here and then we can just do this minus this all in one go so i will have uh 3 mg and uh this bit here is a cos alpha, that bit, this height here is A cos theta. So if we do A cos theta minus cos alpha, then we get this difference in height. Doing the same thing for the weight at the end, we get mg, this time it's 2a and it's still cos theta minus cos alpha here. Okay, so that's the change in potential energy will be equal to the change in kinetic energy, which will be half I. Now, our value of I was this, so that was 33 over 4 ma squared multiplied by omega squared. And I'm trying to end up with omega squared on its own. So, uh, let's see what happens. So here I end up with uh, a total of 5mg, 
which gets multiplied by 2, so that makes 10 mg, which gets multiplied by 4, so 40 mga. Oh no, hang on, right, let's get the m's out. Let's divide by an a as well. Okay, so I've got, sorry, 5g times 2 makes 10g times 4 makes 40g. All of that is multiplied by this cos theta minus cos alpha. Then I need to divide by 33a and I end up with theta dot squared. Okay, just looking at their answer. Yes, that's exactly what they got. So that's another four marks for that part of the question. And now we're ready to go into part C. So hence or otherwise, find the angular acceleration of the pendulum. So the angular acceleration, they want us to find theta double dot. So if we're trying to find theta double dot, there are uh, several different ways because it says hence or otherwise. So one thing that you could do is um, try to differentiate this and end up with a theta double dot or you could do the equation of rotational motion. Now let's try going with what they were hinting at which is I think to differentiate this. So uh, if we differentiate the right hand side, then we get 2 theta dot. So bringing the power down in front, take 1 from the power and then multiply by this differentiated and this differentiated with respect to t. So you get a theta double dot. That will equal this thing differentiated. So uh, here you end up with now cos differentiates to negative sign. So you end up with negative 40g over 33a sine theta theta dot and cos alpha is a constant remember so this bit will just disappear when you differentiate now you've got theta dot theta dot so we can get rid of this and so we can end up with theta double dot straight away and we end up with theta double dot is uh, negative 20g sine theta over 33a and that part of the question is worth three marks now the alternative to this would have been to do use l equals i theta double dot l being the moment of the resultant force so you could have got that by doing a multiplied by 3mg sine theta plus 2a multiplied by mg sine theta, uh, both of those negative, equals i, the i that you got from the previous bit of the question, multiplied by theta double dot. So you could have got to the same result using this. But as you already had this equation, it was perhaps a bit quicker to, to do this rather than writing down the equation of rotational motion right from scratch. Anyway, Given that alpha is pi over 20 and PQ has length 8 over 33, find to three significant figures an approximate value for the angular speed of the pendulum 0.2 seconds after it has been released from rest. Okay, so I need to find a value for theta dot then. Um, and I need to look at the relationship between time and the angular speed. So I am interested in the period of the motion. So I am going to say that as theta is small, uh, sine theta is roughly theta, therefore theta double dot is equal to minus 20g theta over 33a, simple harmonic motion, so therefore omega is going to be root 20g over 33a, and therefore t is going to be 2 pi, oops, 
33a over 20g. Um, now I can put in my value for a and so on. Now for me a was half the length of the rod so in this case the length of the rod so 2a is equal to 8 over 33 and so therefore a is 4 over 33 so that's the value that i can put into all of these equations um, alpha <coughs> is pi over 20 now I can see that nice things are going to happen here when I put this value of a into this because if I do 20 times 9.8 and I divide that by 33 and then I divide that by 4 over 33 I end up with 49 which is then square rooted and I end up with 7 so therefore my omega is this lovely value of 7. Okay, now, basically, in this part of the question, I'm trying to find the relationship between theta and the time. So, because I've got simple harmonic motion, with the simple harmonic motion equations, you would normally say that x is equal to the amplitude multiplied by sine omega t or cos omega t depending on whether the motion started in the center or at the extreme now as we know that this started at the extreme then we're talking cos but um, here we're not talking extension anymore we're now talking the angle theta we're talking the initial angle which was alpha cosine omega t so this is the relationship that we are using but we are looking for the angular speed so therefore we're interested in theta dot so theta dot will be uh, alpha omega um, this will become negative sine omega t by uh, differentiating this. So theta dot will equal negative omega, uh, sorry, alpha, which uh, multiplied by omega, so 7 pi over 20 multiplied by sine of 7 times the value uh, the time that I'm interested in which was 0 0.2 times 0 0.2 and so I need to pop this into my calculator remembering that my calculator needs to be in radians so let's choose radians so 7 times 0.2 is 1.4 I do sine of that and then uh, the angular speed will be this multiplied by 7 times pi divided by 20 and this gives me 1.08 to three significant figures let's just double check what they wanted fine to three significant figures yes an approximate value for the angular speed of the pendulum 0 0.2 seconds after it has been released from rest yes okay so uh, that part of the question was worth another five marks so altogether in that question you have a total of 17 marks i do hope that you found this solution helpful do click like if you liked it and good luck with your studies bye bye